Hello and welcome to uh, a very good video about how to do a histogram. This is part of statistical analysis based on uh, uh, ranges of data associated with a variable. And we're going to be looking at uh, the data directly from uh, the website I should give a great credit to. It's uh, excel-az.com. So I downloaded here the histogram.xls. If you wanted to also go ahead and download that. Uh, after you get to the website uh, to uh, work with me if you wish to do so. Uh, again, it's uh, excel-easy.com uh, examples histogram.html. Uh, the file that you actually stay, uh, you will be working with, uh, sorry, uh, they end up with the XLS extension. That's the old uh, compatible uh, uh, Excel 2003 and uh, before. So I don't worry about that because they're trying to be uh, as much compatible with all versions of Excel. So when I, once I downloaded this, I'll be able to open it. As you notice, uh, they always give you the solution. Of course, we don't want to leave the solution. We want to understand how the solution is being obtained. So uh, I recommend highly for you to work with these files directly from the website instead of trying to uh, type those data. It makes it a lot easier. With the speed of the internet these days, nothing really uh, impossible. I'm going to go ahead and close my uh, uh, open file from previous videos. And of course, more than anything else, I need to change the view to 200% for your uh, view uh, to be less confusing. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this histogram and delete it. Also, I wanted to go ahead and delete the uh, result from the first or from their uh, website. And notice when I clear this, it doesn't clear the formatting. So sometimes you have a formatting in contents. So the best way is to do that is to go to the home ribbon and go to clear and clear all. Of course, you don't have to clear everything. If you wanted to benefit from the format, you could leave, clear the contents and leave the format, or you could clear the format and leave the contents. The same thing if you want to keep the comments. If somebody sends you a lot of comments, you want to keep them. And very helpful uh, uh, also option uh, when you clear the hyperlinks, especially when you bring some uh, data from the internet to your spreadsheet, then those are full of those hyperlinks that you want to really remove. Anyway, I'm going to clear everything here. I know only format was left. And I'm going to name this bin. Okay. Uh, beauty of this, it's already been done for us. So it shows us uh, there's a list of uh, number of students and classes. And we wanted to show a histograms based on uh, ranges, creating ranges, of course. This is the list of the data. Could, we could, before we do any of the histograms, we would like to investigate maybe the nature of the data that we're dealing with. For example, I'm very curious to know about what is the minimum value. So I will go ahead and say minimum. And I'll select the first cell. Press Control Shift down arrow to take me all the way to the last cell. As long as there is no blank between those cells, it's going to take me all the way to the end. And here we go. We're going to find out that 19 is the smallest uh, or the minimum value. The same thing you want to look at for the maximum. I could either uh, go ahead and select that traditionally, as I do usually, and go ahead and hit Enter. You don't have to close the last parentheses. Excel will do that for you. So I'm dealing with the ranges of value from 19 all the way to 52. Uh, so I could create the, pin, the bin, B-I-N. Uh, to start from 0 to 20, from 20 to 25, 30, 25 to 30, 30 to 35, and 35 to 40. I didn't mention anything before 20 because I know it's going to come from 0 to 20. I didn't mention anything after 40, so anything after 40 is going to be labeled later uh, 40 plus. Don't do anything, just put the bin, the range, and then you could uh, reformat it or retype it in order, but this is must be a numerical value. So don't change that yet to from numbers. You have to leave it as number for the histogram as a st statistical analysis to work fine. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, if you go to the data ribbon, that's where the data uh, uh, analysis is there. Of course, you might more likely you don't have it yet or you don't have even the solver. So what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to go to the file. Uh, if you have, 
uh, <coughs> or off, I mean Office 2010 or 2013. We're going to go to the options. And also with 2007, it's the same in this case. Not all of them. 2007 is relatively very old by now. Uh, adds in. Adds in. Click on it. And we have multiple add-ins, but I wanted to go ahead and leave it with Excel adds in, not the COM adds in. And I click on Go. And notice I have already installed the Analysis Tool Pack. And I also would like to... Uh, install analysis tool pack for the visual basic for application we're going to touch a little bit on that toward the end of the class and also we want to be working with solver at end for decision support uh, toward the end of it so we wanted to also relate to how we can do uh, apply some of the powerful feature existing solver for our problems and we're going to go ahead and say uh, uh, okay here we go and uh, as we're going to see, these are already there, so I'm not going to worry about it. If they were not there, they will be there in your case, just like in your case. So I'm going to click on Data Analysis. It's going to be very little to see, but I'm going to read that loud. I'm looking for histogram in alphabetical order. It's right there, and I'm going to click on it. And now it's going to ask me the very first thing that is required for me is to input the range. I'm going to, again, select the first one. Remember that you might be dealing with hundreds and thousands of data, so it's not really practical for you to keep scrolling all the way down. So in, in this case, in the input range, it's good to go ahead and do it regardless. But you don't have to do it. Uh, as I said, you could select the first data, hit the enter, uh, control shift uh, 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 down arrow. Hopefully it will do that for you. The same thing here for the pen. It's very small, so I could go ahead and do it. I must check the label knowing that I end, ended up adding or including the number of the students in the bin as a title for my bin range and for my input range. Now it says, where do you want the output to? I will say, okay, go ahead and give it me here. So I wanted to go ahead. Nope. See, I did a mistake here. So let me go ahead and make sure that I know what I'm doing. I need to click this here, then I click here. Because if, if my cursor here and I clicked on the cell here, it's going to erase my input range. Don't forget that this output range is going to be inside this uh, uh, sheet. And of course, don't forget that I need to have the chart output, which the whole discussion basically is about it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. Again, one more time. See here, if I deleted this, I go to this one here, Control shift all the way down arrow, it covered all the range for me that I need to include. So that's very easy for you when you have like thousands or five thousands row. Here we go. That is magical. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get that here and maybe squeeze it a little bit here down so we'll be able to see what we have here. I'm going to put the histogram in uh, uh, chart in the data here the bin. So now we are left this as number so it gives me that there is an actual value B from 0 to 20. So it's the time now to go ahead and change it to a label. But don't ever do that before you do the histogram because uh, the bin required from you to have a numerical value. When I change it to 0 20 it's not a numerical number it's going to be a text. So this is very important for you to understand. So 21 to 25 and uh, 26 to 30 and 31 to 35 and 36 to 40 and more now it's going to be 40 plus and 40 plus and it's very easy to uh, know that is the, the way it is if I go to hit and say all right uh, histogram is very very quickly to do all this for us like if I want to do it individually uh, I will go ahead and do a couple of those to prove to you how long it will take us if we ended up doing the uh, using the function. Uh, we can go ahead and say count f. For example, if I want to count f, uh, and it's a good review, I want to count f all this range. Okay, that's the range. Here we go. And I want it to count any value that is greater than or equal to 40. It should give us greater than 40, not greater than or equal to 40. Remember, 40 is included in this range here. So we have to say greater than uh, the greater than 
uh, 40, not greater than uh, or equal. If I want to say greater than or equal, then I will say greater than or equal 41. And here we go. We're going to see here now all the data that in this range that are greater than or equal to 40, it should give me the 2 right here in this uh, location. Let me go ahead and show it to you. So you gave me 2. The same thing if I wanted to go ahead and say all the data that is going to be greater than or equal to uh, uh, <coughs> at 25, but less than or equal to, uh, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 21, but less than or equal, less than or equal to 25. That's a long uh, calculation, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So we're going to say here count F. I'm going to say this. If it's count F, I'm going to do this one time here. Okay. Actually, with this one, since I'm going to be doing two ranges, you know, the range that is greater than or equal to 21, and the ranges that is less than or equal to 25, I have to use another function. It's called count ifs, because now I'm going to be doing two, two ranges, something greater than or equal to something and something less than or equal to something. Therefore, I have to use count f. So now I'll say here greater than count f's because I'm going to have more than one range, and it's going to be here greater than, greater than, or equal or greater than or equal to 21. Yes, and another range, the same range, believe it or not, because now we have multiple, so we have to use the f in less than or equal to 25, and close that, and notice what is going to happen. It's going to give me eight. So you see histogram is really powerful to do all this stuff for you very quickly and very easily. What is left for us? I'm going to go ahead and take that. I don't need it. <coughs> uh, this is obviously the pen. This is the frequency, the right one. If I wanted to change here, uh, for example, the bin from the word bin to range, I could go ahead and type the word here in the formula bar in order for it to be reflected in the little uh, square here and hit enter of course to confirm it. Uh, I need to really have no space between uh, the uh, histogram pieces so I'm going to click the right button uh, format data series and one thing right away I wanted to go ahead and do this is 2013 it's the same thing with 2010 is to go ahead and close that gap width see here immediately it did actually uh, eliminate it, become like really a true histograms. Of course, all the things that you have uh, associated with changing the object, if you don't like the color, you want to make it uh, kind of like dark orange, uh, you could do that. Uh, you have uh, the gradient fill. If you like to have two colors, you know, you could do that also as well. So you're not restricted really to do the thing that you usually do with the uh, one of the things that we have in 2013 that we don't have in 2010 is the fact that uh, pictures could easily be searched online. So you could bring the picture from online directly. For example, if I'm looking here for, I'm going to go ahead and insert it. Okay, go ahead and insert it. And notice in a second, it should be changing the background here for us, which it did at least for the largest histogram we did. That's Univer uh, Texas Lutheran University. And we could go ahead and stop here. And I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.